Hello good friends of YouTube, this is Simon at Gamesomatic and welcome back to the channel. And uh, yeah, welcome back to a face-to-face -face, uh, pickup video. Well, this is going to be like a catch-up vlog, pickup video, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to split this pickup video kind of into two parts because um, I've got quite a lot to get through and I didn't want to be doing like an, an hour-long video. So I'm going to do sort of part one, which is all going to be kind of current gen stuff. There's been quite a lot of new games coming out and I've picked up quite a lot of sort of PS4, a couple of Xbox One games. So I'm going to go through them first and then I'll do a part two and that'll be um, pretty much everything else that I've picked up. Because I've picked up quite a few like a uh, bit more 360 stuff, a couple of PS2 games, quite a few PS1 games. went away, got some PS1 games. So I'm going to go through them in a different video. But on this one... I'm gonna solely sort of concentrate on current gen, current gen stuff, which there's been quite a lot of. Um, I apologise I've not made a video in quite a while, especially kind of a face-to-face -face video. I did a, I did one about a month ago, didn't I, about strategy guides, and then I did one about my Wii, my kind of modded Wii, which was kind of uh, a video that took me a while to do. I had a lot of problems making that video. I'm sort of capturing the stuff for it um, every time I went to sort of change because it's a modded Wii so I go to like switch the Wii from the Wii menu to the uh, like the Mega Drive uh, menu the capture card will cut out and I had to find a way around that I did figure out in the end what what it was but it was a bit of a nuisance but that was kind of the last video I did um, so check that one out if you haven't watched it it's quite a sort of an interesting thing if you're interested in sort of emulating some games on the cheap, uh, the Wii is a good way to go. Um, but yeah, um, I haven't really made a video for a bit. I, the kid, uh, my little boy's been off school, so I've kind of been busy doing things with that. I went away. Um, he went away for a bit, as, which gave sort of me and my wife a little time on our own. We we haven't been away as a couple on our own for more than like one night um, for nearly ten years or something. And he went on a school trip. Um, where he was away for four nights so we thought we'd take the opportunity to actually go away as a couple uh, we went away for a couple of nights um, just like uh, in, over here in the UK but I uh, actually went to York um, which was great because um, there's a good retro game shop there <laughs> so I managed to pick up some stuff from that but we had a really nice time we went away for a couple of nights had a great time and it was a nice break and sort of recharge the batteries a little bit. Unfortunately, when I got back, uh, I've not been very well. I've got a problem, kind of an ongoing medical issue, which I'm not going to go into too much. But I got given some medication for that, which is um, kind of... I, was, I didn't know. I was kind of um, had a reaction to one of the side effects of the medication I was taking was... Um, like was affecting my breathing and I'm asthmatic as well so it was all kind of I was in a bit of a wasn't in a very good way last week I couldn't catch my breath very well and I couldn't figure out why I was and then I kind of figured out it was down to this medication I was taking for something else but I'm feeling a lot better today um a couple of days later I'm feeling a lot better now so I thought yeah what better time to sort of come in front of the camera and do do a pickup video you know because it's been such a long time since and a bit of a catch up on the channel uh, I did want to come on and talk a little bit about YouTube as well while I'm here because um, there's definitely been sort of a lack of a decline I think in the community of people making videos and it's a shame um, and all the, I know there's certainly a lot of the guys and girls a lot of people I used to watch um, are kind of slowly disappearing off YouTube and which is you know a shame because some of them had really interesting you know really nice people with really interesting things to say and especially about games you know kind of a common shared interest but they've definitely seen a lot of people kind of dropping off the radar you know a lot of people kind of getting fed up of it and I can understand why I kind of had a bit of a dip myself over the last certainly I'd say over the last year even over the last 12 months but I want to try and make a um, a bit of a turnaround and try and put a bit more effort into it. I think the reason I kind of 
this my channel's kind of dipped a little bit and I've lost interest is because I've not remained consistent and I think that's very important that you do stuff you know at least a video a week you know um, not only to keep sort of the audience interested but to keep yourself interested you know you take a couple of weeks off and it's harder to get back into it um, but you know I was I've kind of missed making the videos I, I enjoy that creative process of talking like this or recording some gameplay uh, and then editing it and putting it together and I enjoy that that's one of the main things about doing YouTube that I enjoy so I thought it was about time that I got off my lazy arse and made a video um, so yeah so this week uh, I think there's gonna be like three videos going up um, although I may stagger them a little bit um, so not everything comes out at once and then there's nothing again so yeah anyway I, I digress so that's my kind of reasons for not being on YouTube for a bit but I'm gonna talk pickups so we're talking current gen pickups of course it's that time of the year again where everything is coming out um, and it gets really really expensive unless you're like me and you kind of budget for it I kind of knew and I, I always kind of know it's coming so I start like putting money away and planning my spending a little bit better and trading little things in and buying things and retrading them and building up that credit and all kinds of little things just so I can afford to get what I want so I'm gonna go through some um, some of the games I've been playing so I'm gonna start with Xbox one because I actually bought a couple of Xbox one games so the first one was one that I picked up it's a game I've been meaning to play for a while because uh, I quite fancied it when it came out it was only a cheap game but maybe in kind of the tight arse that I am didn't want to pay too much for it and then uh, I went in a uh, cash converters and they had it for six pound uh, so I picked it up and that is a uh, little nightmares and this is the deluxe edition and I was really made up because this was like a second-hand copy that I got from cash converters and I picked it up and um, it had the game add-on um, secrets to the more I think it's called that one uh, I had a voucher for it I'll tell you that you can use the code I've already used it so it won't work um, and it worked the code and it set, so whoever bought it probably like probably paid 10 minutes of it didn't like it took it to cash converters but didn't use the code so yeah it's, that's a little nightmare uh, really good kind of if you've played like Limbo um, really nice graphics in it really dark and pretty tricky in places as well um, but it's a really nice game thought I picked that up it's nice to uh, I've, you know I've been trying to pick some couple of, because I've got a PS4 Pro and most of the stuff I play, I play on PlayStation. I've been trying to sort of pick some stuff up on Xbox One because it's kind of got neglected. As you see, I've got my old Xbox One back. Well, it, it's not actually mine. It's kind of been a, been a funny rotation in this house. This was the one my little boy had in, in his bedroom, uh, and he's been he's been on Xbox for years, uh, but he's decided he wants to go back onto his PlayStation. So. He's gone back onto PlayStation because his mates are on it, and he was getting a little bit sick of, um, you know, certain games weren't coming out that he wanted that he wanted to play. There was a couple of games that came out on PlayStation Four that he really wanted to play, and he was a bit like, you know, you know, his friends were playing on that, and he just just decided he didn't want to stay on Xbox anymore. He, he had you know, so uh, I ended up kind of selling my Xbox and kind of pinching this one back off him because this one had a I had a white one one of the S but it was only a 500 gig uh, this is a terabyte so I kind of pinched this back off him bought him a um, couple of PS4 games and um, he's happy I bought him some PlayStation Plus he's happy I'm happy so sorted so yeah I've been trying to kind of get back in pick up a couple of games for the Xbox one because I think all in all, I've, put, I've, put, I've got like less than 20 games on the Xbox One, so I'm trying to pick some of them up. Another one I picked up, this is, uh, it was my birthday a couple of weeks ago. Um, I got various bits of money off people, and I always ask for money because it's just easier to buy games with and stuff. And I also had some credit in CEX I built up, and this is a game I've been looking to get hold of since it came out, and I've just kind of been putting it off, I hadn't got around to it. Uh, but I had some credit in CEX, so I picked it up, and that is a uh, Shenmue One and Two, which I um, did have the originals of on the um, Dreamcast. I had the first one on Dreamcast, and the second one on original Xbox. So um, I actually traded them in when I knew this was coming out, because I'm not one of these people who just um, 
Yeah. As long as I've got a, cop- a copy of the game, um, I don't really care what format it's on, as long as it's a physical copy. Um, and once I knew it was being remastered in HD, um, I didn't really see the point in me keeping the originals because I knew I'd never play them. I'm not. I'll, I I don't collect games just to sit on shelves. I collect them to play them, and um, you know. They, they once I'd bought this, you know, the other two would have just been sat there forever, and I'd have never touched them. So I kind of got rid of them and got this. So yeah, just started the first one again. Absolutely brilliant game. It really took me back down memory lane. So I've been playing a little bit of that. Uh, picked up. I did this. I did have this originally on Xbox One anyway, and I must have got rid of it at some point. Uh, and then I picked this up because it was like four quid somewhere. That's X Tom Two. Fantastic, fantastic game. Highly recommend it. And then, of course, I got these. Um, I picked up a copy of Forza 2, Horizon 2, because it was the only Forza that I didn't, uh, Horizon that I didn't have with the new one coming out. I had four Hor- Forza Horizon 1 and 3, but I never actually got around to playing 2. Uh, originally, I was going to get it on Xbox 360 before I got my Xbox One, but then I never got around to it. And then um, I think 3 came out, and I bought 3. And then because I was playing three, I never really got around. Again, I just thought, well, I, you know, I've been playing three, so I'll probably never get around to playing two. But again, I saw this for like a five or somewhere, and I thought, yeah, I'll pick that up. And then this one is a game I wasn't going to get, actually. Um, I wasn't going to get this game when it was announced because I didn't like some of the online stuff on it. Um, but then I played it... Um, I got a, a month of the Game Pass on Xbox uh, One. I think I got it like two months for like one pound fifty or something. So I thought I'd give the game a try, and uh, I actually really, really liked it. Uh, really enjoyed it. The online was nowhere near as intrusive as uh, I was led to. It was kind of led to believe when the game was first announced, uh, and that's Forza Four. Um, it's very very rare that I'll buy a game that is kind of so heavily integrated with the online side of things but I'm such a big fan of Forza Horizon um, the Forza games and I love driving games and I, I really really enjoyed Forza 3 uh, and actually the online isn't that intrusive on this at all it's kind of um, the way it was presented when they announced it was like everyone in the world you drove past would be kind of an, another online player and it's not really like that at all they kind of just show up as um, ghosts if you like within the world I mean and I've put about 30 to 40 hours into this now and I can count on one hand the amount of times I've come into contact with these ghosts in the world you know um, you can t- you can turn the driver to our names off and everything it's you know because I hate I hate it when you've got the names above the cars it totally breaks the immersion for me but you can turn all that off and actually it's a really really good game and with it being with of course being sort of you know British and English and it being set in England you know or well set in, in Great Britain because I think obviously uh, Edinburgh's in it so there's quite a bit of Scotland in it as well um, yeah it's really really good so I'm having a lot of fun with this so yeah, I thought it would be nice to pick up some Xbox One games. Uh, going on to PS4. Um, I've been playing a lot of the VR lately, you know. A lot of people sort of think the VR is a little bit of a fad. But I don't know, I, I kind of think it, it's here to stay. I, I think they'll bring another version of it out with the next PlayStation. Um, I think it'll be like a more refined version. There's rumours going around they're going to bring out like a wireless version of it which would be fantastic, that would be really cool, because that's the only thing about it that kind of bugs me, the VR, it's all kind of the wire you've got hanging off your head. But I picked these two games up because they were both kind of highly recommended. So the first one, and this is the game that I've done some gameplay of, and I'll stick it up on the channel uh, later in the week, uh, it's Firewall Zero Hour. Now uh, this is kind of, um, if you've ever played Rainbow Six, this is kind of a VR version of Rainbow Six, but it's a fantastic, fantastic game. Um, uh, you play it predominantly online with other people, and it's very rare that I play online with other people. But what this has also got 
is an offline mode, uh, which is called like a training mode, where you can, and it's essentially what they should have put in Rainbow Six Siege. It's the terrorist hunt mode from Rainbow Six Siege, and you pick a map, and it's, you can go in solo, and it's full of terrorists, and you go down, and you go around, and you'll either attack, uh, you, you've got to get sort of this laptop, and then hack into it, and then defend it while they come after you, well, well, you're kind of the, you're uploading this information from this laptop, uh, they come for you, or you can just initially just defend the laptop off right from the off, and then you know, again they're coming to get you, or you've got to find the laptop and you've got to attack them. It's kind of an attack and a defend mode, but you can play it all in solo, which is fantastic. Um, you can play all the maps, and what I really like about it is, like in Call of Duty, when you play online. You're upgrading, you're ranking up and upgrading, and you can unlock new guns and everything. But when you go in Call of Duty, when you play offline in single player mode against bots, you can't do that. You can't upgrade. It's all just open. Every gun's available. There's no sense of progression at all. What I really like about this is when you play the training mode offline on your own in solo, you're still getting that progression. You still earn XP, you still earn credits, and so you're still constantly unlocking guns and ranking up. And that carries over into the online game, so you do not have to play this online. Um, saying that, I have played a couple of matches online, and it is great. It's one of the few games. It's great fun. Um, and when you die, um, there's only four of you in a squad, and then when you die, it takes you to this other screen, which is like uh, you're controlling all the CCTVs around the map, and you can actually guide the three players that are left or the two players that are left. And sort of shout out to them things like, uh, right, there's a player coming up on your left. Um, he's just around the corner, um, you, and you can guide the players that aren't dead round the map to help sort of complete the game, which is really, really good. Encourages that kind of teamwork. I'm not, I hate playing online with other people. I, you know, I'm an anti-social bastard, and I hate playing online with other people. But I did have a ball playing this, and it was fun. I actually got a really good community. You know, I didn't get any nasty kind of trash talking of anyone you know um play quite a few games with various different sets of people and they all seem really kind of decent nice you know people and i don't know if that's because they want you know they want people to keep playing this game and you know they don't want people to leave the match you know so it's yeah i highly recommend it really good with vr game uh and another one is this is this surprised me. I got this on because it was got such good reviews, and I thought I'd give it a go. Uh, it's Astrobot uh, Rescue Mission. This is by far one of the best platforming games I've ever ever played. It is absolutely. I can't explain how amazing this game is in VR. Uh, you look at the cover and you just think it looks like a silly little robot game, but it's absolutely amazing. It just transports you into like it's like being in a Mario game. It's that good. It's it transport you or a Ratchet and Clank game. It's like being. Uh, it actually reminded me very much of um, sort of the Clank parts out of Ratchet and Clank where you play as Clank. It's very very similar to that, but you're actually inside this world, and it's the full all the levels are, are you know. Rather than just looking at it and you know you're going along and you're jumping up on something and then you're attacking, so it's all around you. So you, as you're playing this, you kind of sat there in the chair playing it, and the guy that you're controlling is there, and then you're kind of watching him. He's going over the top of you, and sometimes you got to look behind, and he goes behind you, and then he's going down. You got to look down there, or he'll be up there, and it's just everywhere. It's all in kind of encompassing, and it is so much fun. Um, it, the levels aren't too long, they're nice and compact, they've got loads of replayability to them. This is one of the best, not only just one of the best VR games I've played, it's one of the best games I've played this year. It's absolutely brilliant. I've nearly finished it, I'm about three quarters of the way through it. Um, and it's really cheap, you can pick it up for about 20 quid if you shop around, uh, 20, 25 quid. It's, it's, it's a must have for the VR, it's in my top three best games I've played on the VR. It's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. 
A uh, couple of other games I've got here. I haven't played too much of this one. This is uh, actually a game I, um, my, my little boy wanted to play. Um, uh, he really liked those kind of story based games. Um, so I kind of pinched it off him and started playing it. It's actually quite a lot of fun. It's not very long apparently. So I should have it uh, finished pretty soon. But yeah, Detroit Become Human. Um, yeah, it's if you've ever played kind of Fahrenheit, the Heavy Rain, it's very similar. It's a little bit better than them actually. It's probably the best of all those type of games that I played. And I've been playing David Cage games for a long time. I mean, I've even got um, I've got the Nomad Soul on Dreamcast. So I, even his very early games, I've been playing sort of David Cage uh, Quantic Dream games for forever. I play pretty much all of them, uh, and I can definitely say this is the best one. Um, I actually like Beyond Two Souls as well. Um, the one I didn't really like was actually Heavy Rain, which is the one that kind of got the most critically acclaimed. Um, but this is um, this is really good. So, but I've, I've kind of played about four or five hours of it so far, and I think well, I'm pretty play it pretty slowly, so I'm maybe about halfway through it. But it's really good fun. Yeah, it's good. Um, this one I'm probably mentioned on another video I think I think on my last this was just about to come out on my last pickup video um, so I definitely mentioned it and that is Tomb Raider uh, which I've now played and finished um, I've got the gold edition also picked up strategy I know I show this on this is my strategy guide video but yeah I picked up the strategy guide as well um, which is really nice but yeah I picked up this um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, really, really good. It's kind of slightly been panned, this game. Not panned, but it's got it's not got amazingly good reviews. And I don't know why, because I just had a ball with it. I'm still... Kind of, I finished the main story, uh, but I'm still dipping back into it to kind of mop up all those little... Um, you know, go and find all the treasures and get all the, the boxes and everything. Um, plus, I got... Because I got the gold edition... Um, I got the season pass with it, which is going to bring out. I think they're bringing out another seven tombs, one every month for the next seven months, kind of challenge tombs, and some extra game modes and things. So that should be really interesting. But I had a, I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't think it's as good as Rise of the Tomb Raider. I've got to be honest, but that doesn't mean I think it's a bad game. I think it's a fantastic game. Um, but um, it is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. It's really, really good. I also got actually a thing when I because I got it from game and I'd pre ordered it. I got the game, but I also got this like steel book thing, um, which is really kind of nice. Uh, there's nothing in it, unfortunately. Oh, no, I think there is something in it. I think there's some postcards. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, there's some nice little postcards in it and stuff. Nice little extra, I suppose. You know, just something to stick on your shelf. Um, so, yeah, I've got a nice, nice little steel book with it as well. Um, this next one's one that I picked up from a cash converters. I, I had been after this, but then I read that um, one. I'd read that it not it wasn't very good, or not that it wasn't very good a good game, but half the game was missing. Apparently, if you bought it on the Xbox One originally when it came out on the PC, that they basically chopped the end of the game off and sold it as DLC, which instantly kind of put me off buying it. Um, but then I saw this in a cash converter about a month ago, and I think it was like a tenner. And I knew that was a good price because it goes for like 24 quid or something in CEX. Um, so I picked it up, um, and I played it. I haven't played a lot of it. I played about four or five hours, or four hours, four or five hours of it, I think. Um, but so far, it's actually probably the best one. Um, that, well, other than the first one, uh, it's Dead Rising 4. Frank's big package which has got everything on it it's got all the DLC it's got the ending on more importantly um, yeah and I'm really I've really enjoyed it um, you know I didn't really like Dead Rising 2 that much um, off the record was okay but just okay-ish Dead Rising 3 I've actually just rebought Dead Rising 3 because I saw it somewhere for a couple of quid I wasn't keen on but at the time when I played it but I thought I'll go back to that I think I might give that one another go but this one I really enjoy it I'm having a lot of fun with it this is this one takes you back very much reminds me of the original 
which was, you know, in my book, the best one. And this is very much like the original one. So I'm really enjoying this, actually. But some people don't like it. I don't know why. Uh, I picked up a copy of Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition because I love this game. I have got it on PC. Um, but I just wanted a, a copy of it on PS4. I could just kind of kick back on the controller and play it. I mean, you can play it with the controller on a PC. But, you know, I prefer to just throw a disc in PS4, really really good game um, obviously Definitive Edition has got all the DLC on it, that was that wasn't very expensive a couple, um, I think it was about 4 or 5 quid um, this is a funny one I'm still very unsure about this game um, there's things I love about it and things I'm not so I'm not overly keen about it uh, and that's Strange Brigade uh, I love Rebellion for taking the risk to bring out a new IP and it's something totally different. This is a game made with the same sort of engine or whatever as uh, Sniper Elite. It's made by the same people who make Sniper Elite. Um, and it's really, really, I love the setting. It's kind of, you play with one of these four guys, you can choose which one, and you go into these sort of big open maps and they're full of kind of Egyptian zombies and there's treasure and there's lots of exploration and puzzles and it's really good but the slight issue I have with this game is the one thing that this game is kind of built around is the shooting um, it's almost like a horde game a little bit like Call of Duty Zombies when waves of kind of zombies come at you and I love the way there's like um, to be like zombies coming at you and there's little traps around you can set off traps around the map as, as as you're playing it so there'll be a load of like um, mummies coming towards you and there'll be like a big spinning thing with a blade on you shoot it, it this big contraption starts or spikes come out of the ground and it'll kill loads of them and then you've got all these magical powers the only thing is about it for a game that's based around shooting the shooting feels a little bit off on it it's I don't know what it is it's just it's not as accurate as it should be the shooting and there's been quite a few occasions where I've kind of gone it's well it, it kind of registers that I've missed the shot or something and you're thinking no I definitely aim that in the right place and shot um, I don't know if it needs a patch or something just to tight just to tighten that shooting the feel of the shooting up it's just a little bit I don't know how to explain it a little bit fudgy a little bit just slightly off the shooting anyone who plays it will know what I mean um, but apart from that, it's fantastic. I mean, I love the setting and I love the uh, the voice acting and the cutscenes and everything about everything else about it is great. And it's a lot of fun. And I played it online. Um, again, I played it online. Just jumped into a game with three other people, and it's uh, it is very much like Call of Duty Zombies, that kind of gameplay where you go through waves and unlock new areas on the map. And it was brilliant. I had a lot of fun playing it online. Uh, the only thing is, I literally played one match, and the match lasted like an hour and ten minutes. It just went on and on and on. But it's a fantastic game. Um, I do recommend it, but I'd wait till it's one of them. I'd wait till it goes down. If you can pick this up for about twenty quid, twenty twenty five quid, um, which I think it has gone down to about twenty five quid now, it's definitely worth picking up. Definitely, um, but don't go playing like forty quid or something for it. Um, another game I picked up was uh, I've been after this for a while I know um, Dean mentioned it Dean from Escape to Gaming mentioned this on the last video that he did um, hi Dean hope you're feeling better mate um, and that was Gravel again another game that kind of got panned when it came out uh, this is really fun this cost me 6 quid um, I've been looking everywhere for this and it was around kind of the 30, 35 quid mark and I knew I didn't want to pay that for it. It's kind of a budget um, racing game, a little bit like um, a little bit like Motorstorm in places. You know, there's lots of mud in it and grime and crap, but it's actually a lot of fun. Um, I'm waiting for the seat. There is a pass to it when you first go to the menus like four sections are kind of locked off and that's all the extra DLC you can buy for it um, when the pass goes down to like a five I'm going to buy the season pass for it because um, you get quite a lot of extra content with the pass as well there's all new events and stuff 
But if you can, again, I think this is like six ninety nine or something in game at the moment. It's definitely worth picking up for six quid. Uh, it's really good because of arcade. Take your brains out, fun game. So yeah. Um, another driving game that I picked up was Dirt Four. Uh, I love the Dirt series. I've got all the other Dirt games, so I thought I had to pick this one up. Um, I wasn't sure about this because I've heard bad things about the sort of procedurally generated tracks, the randomised tracks, which worried me. And I know a couple of people said they're not very good, the randomised sort of randomisation in it. But after playing it for a bit, that's only in certain. You have to sort of go to a different play if you play through the normal sort of career mode on it you don't get the randomized tracks you get all the proper tracks you have to go to a different part of the game where you kind of create your own tracks and then it ha you get these kind of randomized tracks then um i thought the whole game all the tracks were randomized but they're not if you just play through the normal um career mode in it you know as a rally game you, you get all the proper stages and everything um it's not as hardcore as um colin mccray rally or whatever it was what was it? oh sorry dirt rally which is the other one with the blue sort of thing um which is a sequel coming out too soon um it's this is a little bit more arcadey it's a little bit more forgiving um it's more and it's more set up like a traditional sort of dirt game um, but it's it's you know I've enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun and it's you know really nice graphically. It's really nice and everything. It's pretty cheap now. I think I got this for a tenner and you know brand new. So I think that was in Smith's Games or something. They had it going for about a tenner. So um, again, this is another cash converters. I've actually been after this because I had it on PC quite a few years ago and really enjoyed it. And then I saw it in cash converters for like a fiver and thought. Oh, I didn't even know it had come out on PS4, and I thought, oh, I've got to get that, because I used to love that game. Sort of really old-fashioned, top-down RPG, uh, Titan Quest. Um, I don't, you know, this is really kind of an old-school, you know, isometric RPG game. A little bit like Diab uh, Diablo or something like that. It's a lot of fun. I haven't really played too much of it yet. I just kind of played the first half an hour of it, and got so much stuff to play so I haven't got around to playing it but I'm looking forward to really sinking my teeth into this at some point uh, and the last two games I've got were Assassin's Creed Odyssey um, which I've actually ploughed about 30 hours into um, I am enjoying this it's really good but I'm going to say a but but it, it just hasn't captured me as much as um, as, as Origins did now the thing is, uh, and I, the thing is with Origins is, when I first played Origins, I wasn't keen on it. And I remember when I first played Origins, I played about twenty-five hours of it, and then I put it on the shelf and didn't touch it for about four or five months. And then I went back to it and absolutely loved it and played right through the whole game with all the DLC and everything. Um, but it took me a while to get into it. And this is kind of having the same effect on me. Um, it's just not... There's things about it I really like. The ship combat in this is... They brought the ships back from um, Black Flag. I love that. I love all the ship combat in it. The diving in it is fantastic. You think the underwater diving sections in Tomb Raider... Um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider are good. The, even better, I think, in this. I mean, you go under the, like, the Greek Ocean and there's... There's like big underwater palaces that you've got to kind of go and loot and shipwrecks just off the Greek islands and this this kind of whole kind of map just full of little Greek islands you can sail to. It's very much it's very similar to Black Flag actually, which is my one of my probably one of my favourite. At one point, it was my favourite um, Assassin's Creed game, Black Flag. Um, and this is as near as nearer to Black Flag than Origins was. You know, there's a lot of sailing, there's a lot of going from A to B, there's loads of stuff. But uh, they've kind of changed up the combat again a little bit on this one, which I'm not overly sure about yet. Or I wasn't when I started it. Now I've ploughed about 30 hours into it. I'm starting to get used to the combat in it a little bit now. And it's getting a little bit better, and I'm not getting my ass kicked as much. 
But when I was kind of first low, I think I'm on like level. I don't know what level I am now. I think it might be about around about 17, 18 or something like that. I'm, I'm doing okay now. But when I was in those lower levels, sort of level 5 or 6, I was just getting my ass kicked all the time by pretty much everyone. Um, and they've kind of added in these new powers as well, like these special attacks. Some of them are really good, some of them are a bit so. So the arrow. I really missed the Predator bow from uh, Assassin's Creed Origins where you could zoom right in and it was a bit like a sniper rifle. They have got this in this, but they've done it differently and it's nowhere near as good. Um, but then some of the attacks on this are really good. There's the one where you can like rip the guy's shield off him and hit him with it. That's really good. Um, I re I am enjoying this, but I've, I've kind of not undecided whether I, I like it as much as the other one yet. I think it's going to be one of those where um, I'll put it down and then I'll go back to it in six months and just absolutely love it. I think that's what's going to be. So yeah, I got this straight from Ubisoft. That terrible trouble. Um, it didn't come on the day of release like it was supposed to, even though I pre-ordered it from Ubisoft. It kind of came five days late, which I wasn't very happy about. But when it did come, unbeknown to me when I ordered it, it came in this really nice Ubisoft um, store exclusive box. And it came with a, a steelbook, which I didn't know. Oh, sorry, is it that way around? Kind of opens up, yeah. So it kind of opens up like that. I didn't know I was getting. I didn't know it came with a steel book. So um, even though I was moaning that it was late and everything, when it came eventually, I was actually quite impressed when it turned up in this really nice box. So, and of course, me being a big lover of strategy guides, I had to buy the strategy guide for it. Um, I actually got this before. I already pre-ordered the strategy guide before I ordered the game because I saw the strategy guide in game about a week before it was released. <laughs> Uh, behind the counter and I just said can I pre-order one of those so um, this is really nice you get a big like map with it and everything goes into a lot of detail this is a big bloody map um, but I do love me old strategy guys so so only two more games to go and uh, the next one is Spider-Man Spooderman Spider-Man um, yeah <laughs> my little boy absolutely loves this game um, it's quite funny I got this um, I didn't get it the day it came out I got it a couple of weeks later and um, I played I played quite a bit of it you know I think I played about half of it about 50% of the way through it and I kind of um, I think I put it down because Assassin's Creed had come out and I just played that for like and I thought I'll play Assassin's Creed tonight I'll put this to one side um, my eldest um lad who's 18 who literally hasn't played a playstation game for about a year came in and borrowed it off me and then he had it for two weeks uh couldn't get back off him um, he finished it he's finished it and then he gave it me back and literally within an hour my little boy had taken it off me and he's gonna play it and then he finished it yesterday so everyone's finished and played this game before me i'm still stuck kind of halfway through it now they're both trying to tell me the end of the game and give me spoilers and ruin it and it's doing my head in so um but this is really good actually whether you're into kind of spider-man or not this is just a very very good game um this is it is definitely without a doubt the best spider-man game made it's got everything the web swinging is perfect in it and that's the one thing they've never really nailed that well in Spider-Man games is the whole web swinging thing. Really good, really good story. Um, I'd be amazed if this doesn't get a sequel because it, it is really good. Um, by what I played of the story um, so far, it's really good. But yeah, just just a really really solid game. Uh, everyone knows because everyone's seen the reviews and the gameplays of it. Um, uh, and it's gone down a little bit already. I think you can pick it up in CX now for 30 odd quid or something. So it's definitely worth picking up. It's a really good open world game. Uh, and it's funny as well. You know, the kind of one line as the Peter Parker comes out uh, within it is really, really good. So, And of course, the final game um, was one that only came out last week. Everyone doesn't know what it is. It is Red Dead Redemption 2, which I'm going to talk a little bit about. Um, I got the normal edition 
I've got a little story to tell about this actually going to get this, which I'm going to tell you in a minute. Uh, picked up the strategy guide as well. Really nice collector's You know I love my strategy guides. Collector's edition strategy guide. Go to on the pile. Um, I've been flicking through this. It's really good the way they've done this strategy guide as well because they've kind of done it in a way where it warns you. So if you're just flicking through it, you know, it, it kind of avoids spoilers. Um, it's very well laid out, actually, uh, strategy guide. Um, I think I got this off Amazon. It was like 20 odd quid. Uh, it wasn't much more than a normal one, so I decided to put for the collector's edition. Uh, the game, I just got the normal version. I didn't really like the way that um, all the different versions had all different missions, and it didn't really matter anyway. There's so much to do in this game. I am amazingly pleasantly surprised by this game. Uh, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the first Red Dead Redemption. I thought it was a lot of fun. But I just thought it was okay. You know, well, it was, it was an exceptionally good game, but you know, I played it and then I moved on to the next thing and I think I've gone back and... I tried to replay it again recently and again, it's just one of those games that I enjoyed the first one, but I've never really been drawn back to it that much. Um, I bought this one on, got this on Friday. I actually pre-ordered it again. I think I pre-ordered from Smith's Games, just the regular version. I was all ready to go and get it on Friday. And then I was sitting in the house on Thursday night, about 8 o'clock at night. Got a text saying, your game is ready for pickup from midnight tonight. Apparently they were having a midnight opening. Um, and... Um, I just thought, fuck it, I'll go and get it tonight and install it. Little did I know it takes like an hour and a half to install. Um, so, me and my wife went out to get it. Um, luckily, we didn't have our little boy with us that night. He was staying over at his cousin's, so we, we thought, I'll oh, suck it. Come on, we'll go on a little bit of an adventure. So, I ended up going to the shop and got this. Um, and then my wife decided to go for like a drive around about 10 different supermarkets <laughs> uh, like 12 o'clock at night and so I didn't end up getting back home till about half one in the morning and I just thought well I'll just stick it on install it and I've, I'll have half an hour on it of course stuck it on it it's an hour and a half to install so I was sat up till like four o'clock in the morning <laughs> waiting for it to install I kind of fell asleep and then woke up and had to turn my playstation off at four in the morning when it had finished so I didn't actually get to play it till Friday but uh, played it on Friday, played it all day Friday, uh, played it on Saturday, I played it a little bit yesterday, it is absolutely brilliant, it is, I've got to say it's a fantastically good game and it's not so much the gameplay because it's not that much different from the first one, there's nothing revolutionary about the gameplay in this, the, the shooting mechanics are pretty much the same, the cover system's the same, the horse riding is slightly improved but it's pretty much the same. Um, but it's just the world that they've created is so detailed and I know this has been said before on quite a few different videos that have come out over the weekend it's the small things in this game that, um, that amaze you it's the attention to detail that they've put in this game that is it's astounding from like the way he cleans his gun um, to the way he walks when he's walking through different environments the animations in it, the sound, the noise, it's probably got the best sound I've ever heard in a game where, you know, you, I was going like across this kind of snowy mountain path and I can hear kind of a voice in the distance or you'll be going across the plains at night um, and you'll see a, like a campfire plume in the distance and you can actually ride over to that campfire and there'll be something, there'll be people camped around it and you can interact with them that can you know the best thing you know i haven't even played that much of the story i did the kind of the initial three or four hours that you've got to do to set up the game and then once that the world in this opened up into that western kind of world i've just kind of been riding around on horseback encountering different people and kind of finding little missions not that i've not been expecting to find uh, like i found one guy that was just stuck in a bear trap at the side of the road and I helped him and it's just what amazed me I mean there was this one guy who got bitten by it I was just in the middle of nowhere on my on this horse going sort of along this dusty path or something and there was a guy there being bitten by a snake so I got off the horse 
and I gave him some medicine and I basically, you know, cured him and he went, you know, he went uh, sort of went, howdy partner and whatever and he went off on his, on his little way and he walked back to town, I just saw him hobbling back to over the, into the wilderness somewhere and I never thought anything of it um, and then literally the day later that maybe happened whatever, and then a couple of days later in the game I, was, I went to one of the towns and I thought I'll go to the gun shop and the guy was sat outside the gun shop, the same guy. And he went, um, oh, there's the, you're the guy that helped me like last week. Um, you're the guy that cured me. Um, I can't give you anything, but if you go in the gun shop, you can pick anything, any gun out of the gun shop, just one item for free. I'll, I'll put it on my tab for you. That's how detailed the game. And I went in the gun shop and the guy behind the counter went, yeah, he said he'd pay for a gun for you because you helped him like three days ago. Um, to just pick a gun, so I ended up picking like a really good pistol out of the catalogue they had in the gun shop, and it's just lots of those little. It's, it's that amount of detail in it. It's just amazing. Um, I thought this game would just be good. I thought I just thought it'd be just like oh yeah, it'd be like GTA Five but Wild West. It's so much better. I, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised by how good it is. I mean, I was playing. I spent the last two weeks playing you know Assassin's Creed and I've just dropped it to play this um, it is, it's that you know and I'm not saying that the gameplay the actual movement or the gunplay is revolutionary or you know it's, it's brilliant or anything like that It's even though it is good but it's the, the world they've created within this game, the kind of environments it's got to be one of the best environments I've ever seen in a game if you love cowboys and you love westerns it's it's a it's a cowboy simulator basically it, it really is good and um, you know it's not many games that I'd say live up to the, it has been slightly overhyped by some people some people, you know I've seen some videos you know over the weekend saying oh this is the defining game of the generation the best game ever made and you know I don't like that I kind of throw in terms like that around really because you know it's kind of uh, I jump on the hype game I'm not going to say it's the best game ever made but it is certainly a fantastic fantastic game that I'd highly recommend anyone playing uh, it's a lot of fun. Don't expect Grand Theft Auto though. It's a lot more slower paced. You've got to remember, it's a western. Um, you know, you're not driving around in cars, running people over, getting chased by thirty cops. It's a totally different type of game. But it's graphically though, it's just a mind-blowingly gorgeous to look at, and the amount of detail they put into this game is fantastic. So yeah, that's it. that's it for kind of my current gen pickups. Um, like I said, I'll do another video with all the other stuff because there's quite a lot of um, other kind of gen pickups that I've got. But if I'd have added them to this video, this would have been like a two hour long video or something. So I thought I'd just come on and do like part one, if you like, of this pickup session, uh, which is also sort of current gen. Um, thanks for watching. I shall be back soon with part two. And uh, take care of yourselves, and I'll speak to you later. Goodbye.